Here we are at the Gygax home on our D&D RPG tour in Lake Geneva. Uh, what we have for you today is some interviews with f famous TSR celebrities, a little bit of footage of our adventures here, and uh, come along and visit with us. We're here in Lake Geneva, and the reason why I wanted to come here is that it's the home of Dungeons and Dragons. Everything was created here. This cultural phenomenon started here in this sleepy town. It's great to see how close all the TSR things are. They're just right across the street from each other or down the block from each other, and everything is, the history that's in this condensed area, I wanted to show everybody and to, to, to have us explore how Dungeons & Dragons created adventures for us. We had a quick historical walk through the streets of Lake Geneva, uh, taking in all the TSR, important TSR spots. We started, of course, at the Gary Gygax's house and walked down to the lakeside and saw his memorial, even rolled some dice on the memorial to get some mojo into our dice, and uh, continued up then to the TSR offices, the hobby, where the hobby shop was, to the theater where he often got inspiration watching movies and serials, and uh, we passed his childhood home, went to the place where the dungeon, the first TSR first shop was, uh, Don Kays, who was his home and who was integral to getting the finances for Dungeons and Dragons in the first place. And then we ended up, up at the uh, historical Gen Con Horticultural Hall, uh, where uh, Gen Con uh, first started. My first job was a, as a dishwasher. I was young, and I don't think I should have been working at that time. I think I was like 11. And my, I was going to the mall with my mom and I was seeing this one book that I wanted to get over and over again. And I, my first check, I walked out and, my mom, and I wanted to buy this book and she said, Terrace, it's going to be like a good section of your check. Are you sure you want it? And I said, yes. And she said, well, it's your money. You do what you want it. And it was the Dungeons and Dragons, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, first edition monster manual. And I brought it home and I was reading it because I really loved monsters and, there, and that type of thing when I was a kid. And I went through it and I realized it was a game. And I realized after that it was an immersive game that you could actually go and slay monsters and, and go against uh, zombies and, and liches and all the cool stuff that I, I saw in Sinbad movies. So uh, it, was, it was this huge, oh my God, this is a game, this realization. And I then I've been hooked ever since. We managed to game at the Gygax home. Uh, it was one of the centerpieces of, of, of the tour where we get to roll dice where Dungeons and Dragons was written, where it was created. And uh, part, of the, part of the fun of that is to also have TSR celebrities old, old to DM us all the way through our adventures, like Ernie Gygax, of course, Jeff Leeson, and James Ward. Do you have a favorite story you'd like to talk about, uh, tell for about the old days? Oh, I have the Gary introduction story. That's my okay. favorite story of all time. Can you tell us? You bet, I love to. Time's 1974, I just graduated from college with an education degree, and every Tuesday I would come to Lake Geneva from Elkhorn, Elkhorn's eight miles away, that's where I lived. Every Tuesday I would come here and go to the bookstore and collect fantasy and science fiction books, because that's when they got it in. So one Tuesday I was there, and I was collecting, you know, I was collecting Fafford and the Grey Mouser books, and I was collecting uh, Conan books, just a bunch of different books, and I had seven books in my hand. And I, I, I looked over to the side, and this very strange biker dude was also collecting books. And he had this blue jean jacket on, and he was all bearded, and he had some, uh, some dirty jeans on, and, a, and boots. He, he just looked like a biker to me. But when he got done, we both had the exact seven books in our hand. Oh, awesome. <laughs> we found it hilarious. That is and, awesome. and, and we both talked a little bit about reading and how much we really liked Conan. And he said he had a game where I could play Conan the Barbarian and fight Set. Wow. And I said, really? 
<laughs> he hooked me like a fish, <laughs> reeling me in. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I, I was I was on his porch where you guys are playing games right now. Right. And uh, and he taught me how to play D and D. And I played a wizard. I've been playing wizards ever since. I love wizards a lot. Right. But uh, that's how I met Gary Gygax. That's awesome. It's, it it is a fun little yeah, story to tell. Is, yeah. uh, serendipity. Yes, exactly. Right? Serendipity. Exactly. Very serendipity. Uh, the thing about role playing, I discovered a little, uh, quite a while ago that I'm a I'm a role player no matter what game I'm playing. If I'm playing a board game, a uh, miniature war gamer, game a war, miniature war game, any type of game, I love to role play. And and role playing really has 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 been part of how I game forever. But why I like it is because I always want to have an adventure, even when I'm traveling or uh, coming together with friends. I want a sense of adventure and role playing gives me this ability to to be elsewhere and to explore and to have adventures inside me, the theater of the mind as they say. Do you have a favorite story from the old days that you'd like to relate? Yeah, and this would be from the hobby shop uh, days. Um, I don't know if it was a weekend or not, but I actually picture the woman coming in because the counter is right by the front door. And, so this lady comes in and she introduces herself as a, a Baptist. She's from a Baptist church. And the first thing out of her mouth was, and she's really nice, she said, where do you keep your magic items? And I was like, wow, that's a good question. I said, I, what do you mean? Um, our magic items are lead miniatures. I said, we have you know, every line of miniatures. No, where do you keep your magic items? And I said, that's not the way this game works. So I explained how it worked. I, I showed her in the hobby shop. I showed her downstairs so she didn't think that we had magic items in the basement. Um, so she saw the sand, sand castle and everything. And um, when she left, she was just really nice and thanked me for it. And she, she went on her way. So first thing I did is I got on the phone and called up Gary. And I said, hey, this lady just came, this uh, Baptist lady. And uh, blah, blah, blah. And um, so what makes the story my favorite, actually, is um, Gary said, uh, good work, Doc. You good did a really work. good <laughs> job. So I was like, yay, it's Gary. You saved us. From yeah, so that was, yeah. Wow, so she was literally looking for magic items? She she, was just, this, was, just, this is when the Satan scare exactly, happened. Exactly. This is when we were all uh, worshiping demons, demons and sacrificing babies and stuff. Um, so, um, but no one had ever come to the hobby shop um, asking such questions. So right. I don't know if they thought, ooh, we're going to catch them at it. Um, and there was not even, back then there wasn't even the, the fake lit up wands that you can buy right, right. or the crystal balls. We didn't have any of that kind of stuff. Um, not that that would have mattered much, but she left pleased and uh, never heard from her again. And like I said, uh, Gary said I did a good job and that was the main oh, thing. So, yeah. so I have a follow up question. So if, if she would have asked where the summoning and sacrificing uh, circle is, would you have led her to that, or was that still I, secret? I would have said, I'd show you, but I'd have to kill you. Yeah, that's okay. so, so understandable. Yeah. Understandable. <laughs> she wasn't a baby that we usually sacrifice, but you know, so she would have done. Right. She would have done. She's holy. She was holy. She was holy. So, so. What, what was the reaction to, uh, what was TSR's reaction to the whole Satan, Satan scare? Um, at first it was kind of like, well, it caught us all unawares because it's like, what do you mean? It's a role-playing game. And most of it was based on the cover of the Dungeon Master Guide by Dave Sutherland, and that's an Afrit, or a, and that's not a demon, but it looked demon-like. Uh, um, and from the section of the company I was in, we, um, it boosted sales yeah. because once <laughs> it went out, um, and Gary said, um, all... Um, information about us, good, bad, or indifferent, true or not, is going to help sales, and sales just went up like crazy. So um, we weren't, um, no, it, it really helped, and there wasn't a, oh my gosh, because we weren't doing anything weird like that. It was just misunderstandings, and um, and I'm sure that some people heard from gamers that, oh, we killed Beelzebub or something like that. And when you look at it in that aspect, that's good because you're good killing evil. Evil, that's right. But that's they right. didn't. They didn't glom onto that. They did the negative part. So yeah, it's funny because I remember having that the Dungeon Master's Guide at my uncle's place, who was quite religious, and he looked at the book and he said, "Why did you bring that into my house?" And my mom had to have a talk to him, and then she asked me, "Terrace, is that 
devil worshipping? I'm like, it's a game mom. And she, she just totally left the lawn. So complete uh, awesomeness to my mom. But uh, yeah, it's it was a thing. It really was a I'm, thing. Was, a similar story. Um, I learned in Boy Scouts through Skip Williams, a, a big name in the industry. And um, so I was 14 or 15, 74, 1975. Um, and it was just a, the wood grain set. It wasn't even demons on, or on the freed or whatever on the book cover. But um, I found this after the fact. Um, Mom went to Dad and said, I'm afraid Jeff, and I'm the youngest, so I'm the baby, so of course we have to coddle him the most. Right. Um, that's why I'm not so manly. Um, so um, she went to dad and said, I don't think he should be doing this because it's demon worshiping. And again, I was with Boy Scouts. We were doing this in Boy Scouts. And um, so, uh, and my dad was usually along on the, the camping, camp outs. So she, he said, leave him alone. He's with his friends. They're not doing any harm. So if it hadn't been for my dad, who didn't know anything about gaming, um, if it hadn't been for him, um, my life would be completely different because then I wouldn't have been able to play D&D. &D and um, yeah, so uh, thank goodness for dads. Role-playing creates this sense of community, first of all, this sense of, of uh, companionship and of trying to solve something together and to overcome things together. And I think that's a really uh, important part of, of being human. It also creates, of course, math skills and communication skills. But, but mostly gives this adventure for a, a group of people to overcome together, a cooperative action. And that really plays to a lot of who I am. One of the most important points of the, of the tour for me was to create this nostalgic feel, this feeling of how we used to game as kids. And we want, I wanted to bring back that feeling. So we rented a house so we would all be together in the same house. We cooked meals so we would all be gathered as a family. And then we gamed as if we were gaming in our, our mom's basement just to have that sense of, of nostalgia and feeling of the adventures of the past. I'd like to thank Yolanda and Tony for uh, the two houses uh, nesting or sandwiching the Gygax home. Thank you for helping me create the, the tour that I wanted with, with this sense of community and family and of homes and a house stays. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate it. Why are you still interested in Dungeons and Dragons? What, what, what brings you back? Um, my imagination is always flowing, and it's a way to be able to share fun and adventure with others. Right. Because believe you me, um, my mind can do more than my body. We've got a whole bunch of people come with us uh, on adventures. Why do you think they might have uh, traveled all this way to, to play Dungeons & Dragons? Well, they wanted to come to our equivalent of Mecca because this is where fantasy role-playing really grew from. There might have been a, 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 an old dormant seed that, that occurred up in Minneapolis, right. but then we took it and planted it in a fertile ground, and from there it expanded throughout the world. Right. And it's been fantastic. And I'm so glad to have been in the, the front end. And I hope to be playing as, as long as I'm around. Above ground, for sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah, myself, too. And hopefully uh, there's a cleric somewhere now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> resurrection spell, resurrection spell, resurrection spell. I don't want to be a lich, I don't think. But no, we'll that's see. Right, that's right. We'll see. We'll maybe you maybe you will. Wars, you know? if, it, if it allows you to, to uh, play more D&D, &D, would you become a lich? I don't know. No. <laughs> I do have a fat head, basically. Yes, the skull would be large. You see, an oversized skull. <laughs> you see, an oversized skull. <laughs> That's awesome. With brown eyes, <laughs> brown gems. When let's talk about the house a little bit. So okay. when when you were when you were growing up, did you do you remember like the sandbox and you remember all that stuff? Yeah, the like do you remember? Sure. What's your first memories of 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 tactics games where there was no dice yet, or there was six sided dice, but for the twenty sided dice system that we use for tactics, there was a little tin coffee can of some brand that I haven't seen in ever. Right. I don't even know if it was still in existence. And Dad took poker chips, and we used one of those like nameplate makers and put one to 20s on them. And then you just reach up above your head and then pull, oh, pull really? the chip. And that would be, that's how you'd get the first one to 20. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until um, someone found uh, these dice at a school supply store here. And there was a company here in Lake Geneva that oh, was really? a school so supply store. So we were at what didn't have a storefront, but right. 
And um, <coughs> that's how we got the first polyhedron dice, and they were retailed at 350, and those were the Hong Kong dice. Right. And then we started asking for so many that they said, this is, you're, you're too large. Here is our, here is the company that we're getting these from. Here's, here's, here's here, you can go Kong. to them. Yeah, so that's wow. when we started getting the Hong Kong dice. So they were discovered, the dice were discovered here in town. It wasn't like something that he did research on no. or something. They just no. kind of showed up. Yes. That's interesting. Yeah, they were way overpriced. Well, I guess yeah, I now they're $70. Yeah, that's right. Something. You can buy some expensive <laughs> dice now. And they still yeah, round yeah, yeah. out no time at that's all. That's right. <laughs> but my dad had this great die, and you could see the edges worn away, and he painted it. But it was the 20 sided die, and it would roll and roll and roll. Nice. It was an anticipation. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? So what is it going to be? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So if you were in the, if you were a, a character in the Dungeons and Dragons universe, whatever universe that might be, where, where, what, who would you be and what would you do? In the Dungeons and Dragons universe, or I thought was it could thinking, be Greyhawk. I was thinking if it was in this universe, if I could be a person. Oh, because, okay. Cause cause then, that's fine. You can answer that Because then I question. would be certain the cleric. Why? Because I could heal the sick. Nice. I could resurrect the dead and nice. all that. So I, as much as yeah. I, I act like a neutral, neutral, greedy, neutral, greedy guy, right. <laughs> when it comes down to it, I've got a lot of awful good tendencies. Right. I think that's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, I absolutely but I, think I like that's to true. still have the spirit of like, ah, <laughs> that's know, right. But, it's, but yeah. when it comes down to it. I think you're it, very kind hearted, actually. <laughs> so, so, but otherwise, I would love to be a magic user magic if user. I was in a fantasy real world. Did, you're, did your dad used to, uh, how did he used to start off an adventure? Was he, did he explain the, the world or what you were doing or would they get right into adventuring or, uh, or finding out what the players wanted to do? How, how did he start uh, an adventure? Do you remember? Um, or was it various ways? It, it, well, obviously, it, it varied from time to time and it depended on who was involved. But um, the idea is he tried to get us to think as if, the first thing he said is that think of this as if it's you with these abilities and these powers and this, these opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so if, once you can immerse yourself in this and say, think of this, you know, everybody's slightly unwashed, uh, this, blah, 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 trying to create a medieval world. There are, there is no technology and the poor kids without phones. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Everything. <laughs> but, um, and in, in no time at all, he, he, he would, lots of, that's why a lot of things started in the tavern. The idea of you sitting down to have food and drink and, and possibly you see all these other, then he'd start adding interesting characters coming in. And before you know it, we, we start conversations. And after that, uh, it would depend. Um, often there might be something like a rumor coming through, uh, some sort of actions and, and survivors of something coming in and then so, right. so the hooks would be there but we never were forced or ch you know uh, he would throw opportunities at us and he'd make it really obvious that, which opportunity you should that, take but we could if we somehow didn't want to take the bait we could go off and do something else nice. and whether but it, it, one of the things my dad did is it wasn't where everything is solid written down it's fluid right. and he could he could move things a little bit and there's absolutely no problems with my father could change a die roll nice. to our advantage or disadvantage. If you're, if you're a chump right. and you're playing like a real creep, things right. are, you know, and you're affecting other people's right. negative things are going to be tending to fall on you. It's not, it doesn't have to be the outright 20 die lightning bolt striking you out in the middle of nowhere. Right. But if, you, if you're spoiling the fun for everybody else, we're going to get rid of you. But if you are part of the fun and the entertainment and this whole ambiance, well then at some point the, the, the killing blow might just be a point of damage. And you're still a teeter at the edge with the suspense and yes. you still have to roll and do the, the hits or whatever is necessary to finish off. And if, if the dice really still continue going bad, then roll a new character. Right. You know, but That's at the, the fates. End, but there's always the element of danger, but the idea is it's shared fun and adventure. And, and, but there is there's mortality, mm -hmm. but the idea is that the mortality is not the goal. Right. The goal is the entertainment and the right. shared fun. And then, of course, the reason that role-playing really took off so much is that not only is it you, but you have the ability to become more and more. Right. 
and that's that's the hook of Dungeons and Dragons right. compared to the board games, right. where it's a single session and it's over, and then you have another single session later. Thanks for watching. Hopefully, you loved our adventure. Perhaps one day you can come along with us. Remember to subscribe, comment, and uh, share the, the, our experiences here, and fill up your life. Thank you.